What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this one, I'm talking about the settings that I use to get the best image quality as possible with the Mavic Air 2S. I'm first gonna show you my settings within the DJI Fly More app, and then run through a quick and dirty example on how I color grade within Adobe Premiere Pro. So there's two resolutions I use when shooting, and that is the 5.4K and the 4K 60 FPS resolutions. I assume most of you guys already know the main benefit of shooting in 5.4K is the flexibility you get while editing. You're able to exaggerate zooms by digitally cropping in or out your images. I add this to almost every clip I do while editing to enhance the movement and the flow of the entire video. Now with 4K 60p, as soon as you switch into this resolution within the app, it will automatically crop in, giving you a tighter angle. And in my opinion, this gives you a shot that looks more attractive to the eye as you are drawn to the center of the frame. I found that this crop is similar to the focal length of the Mavic 2 Pro when shooting in that HQ mode. It truly looks great and will help you get better compositions as the crop is already present on the frame when compared to just shooting in 5.4K and you're gonna have to do that crop after the fact by digitally zooming in. Now for your shutter speed, ISO, and white balance, the basic rules of filmmaking apply here. For white balance, use a custom Kelvin number. For example, for daylight, your white balance should be around 5,500K, cloudy 6,500K, and for sunset, 2,500K. The main caveat with the Mavic 2S is that there's no way to adjust the aperture. It's fixed at 2.8. I Meaning you'll need to adjust the shutter speed or use ND filters to bring your image back to normal exposure levels. Fortunately, the Fly More combo DJI includes ND filters, and this will allow you to shoot at shutter intervals closer to double your frame rate and produce a pleasing shot with motion blur. I've experienced that ND32 is perfect for daylight conditions, and ND16 and ND8 is good for evening shots where the sun is not as bright. Regarding ISO, ideally you want to keep this as low as possible. Around 100 I would recommend or else you'll start to introduce noise into your image. Only in extreme situations I would recommend bumping this past 200 ISO or higher. To maintain the best quality you're going to want to keep this at 100 or not past 200. As low as possible that's going to be the key here. Okay, moving on to the most important section and that is the camera tab. If you're looking to color grade your image, shoot in D-Log. You're gonna have plenty of flexibility here to color grade your image in post here while shooting in this profile. It will give you 10-bit color with plenty more color information and higher dynamic range so you can push that color grade to its max. Next up is color display assist. I personally like to switch this on. It gives you an idea on how your final image will look. It's essentially adding a Rec. 709 LUT in real time to your video feed. However, these colors will not be burnt in. So always keep that in mind. The file that you're gonna be recording will still be in D-Log. It's simply just a color assist. All right, with all these settings out of the way, let's go into Adobe Premiere and start doing some basic color grading. So there's a two-step process that I follow. I always first complete a color correction and then a color grade. In Premiere, pull up your Lumetri scopes by changing your workspace. To do this, you can click the color tab at the top of Premiere. You will now see the Luma Waveform, Vector Scope, and RGB Parade. To set your exposure, you're gonna to wanna to use the Luma Waveform by setting the white and black levels. To do this, go to your Lumetri color panel and use the white and black sliders until the white trace is at 100 and use the black slider until the trace hits zero. Essentially what you're doing here is maximizing the dynamic range of the footage. The reason why I don't go any further on these sliders is because as soon as you go past 100% or below zero, you're gonna start to lose information. Next, I'm gonna correct the white balance. This is where the RGB parade comes into play. So to get the proper white balance, you'll need to match each trace of red, green, and blue to neutralize the image and get true whites. So to do this, you can use either the eyedropper tool or the temperature and tint sliders. I typically use the eyedropper tool for a faster result, but if there's no white points in your image, adjust the temperature and tint sliders until the trace for red, green, and blue all line up. You can also use the shadows and highlight sliders to give your image more contrast, removing the washed out look. 
For this specific shot, I can do this by moving the shadow slider to the left. For the final step, you'll need to bring color back to the image by using the saturation slider. I typically bring it up to about 115 or 120 for drone shots that have been shot in D-Log. Okay, so now onto the fun part, and that's gonna be the color grading. So start lay down an adjustment layer on your timeline and because each shot here has its own different lighting conditions and I want a unique grade for each shot, I'm gonna split that adjustment layer into different sections. So when it comes to color grading, a lot of people have different methods on how they would like to execute it. But personally for myself, I use the curves panel, which features really all the tools that you need to dial in your look. For this specific shot, I'm gonna adjust the curves just a little bit more here. That's more contrast to the image. Next, I can use the hue versus saturation slider to adjust the saturation amount of my hues in my image. So I'm just using the eyedropper tool here, selecting the water and the green trees and adjusting the saturation levels specifically for those two colors. Next, I'm gonna use the hue versus hue slider, which will actually allow me to change the individual colors of the trees and the water. So same sort of deal here. I use the eyedropper and then I just pull this up or down and I can dial in the color that I wanna go for. Now I'm gonna complete this exact same process across a few more clips just by using that curves panel as well as the hue versus saturation and the hue versus hue curves. One more example on how you can amplify the colors in your images is by using the tint and temperature sliders after doing that initial color correction. So for this shot of the sunrise over Toronto, I'm gonna to wanna to enhance the oranges. So I'm gonna bring that temperature slider over to the right and same sort of thing with the tint slider. Then I'm gonna add some more saturation and vibrance just to add a little bit more of a punch to the image. I'm gonna do the same sort of thing with my curves that I did with my previous shots, crushing those shadows and change the hue and saturation and hue versus hue. If you are looking for a way to speed up your color grading workflow and avoid playing with these sliders within Premiere Pro, I do have a brand new love pack out right now for DJI drones. It is live on my website. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe if you're new, and guys, that's it for me. I will see you in the next one.